the first map is Tempest Shrine again. So whether or not we see another very down-to-the-wire nail-biting finish, we will find out soon, as it seems that no one's really uh, being too different on the picks now. I think it, both teams definitely have their tried-and-true four-champion composition that they want to stick with. I can't imagine they're going to change that now. It seems to be that each player is very comfortable on their champion and can't really blame them for sticking with it now, considering they're this close. I'm guessing the players might feel that it's 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 gone too far down the line in this tournament for them to risk any change, because even one champion out of uh, selection can make a world of difference for different reasons and if you're going to pick a champion for a certain reason you need to make sure you're maximizing the usefulness of that champion and in a one game scenario where as this is a best of three forgetting to do one thing can be costly and if you've not used that champion all day there's going to be a small chance you might just forget small things because you've been using one champion so much it's also, definitely possible especially on the side of tkg like it seems to be a perfect blend of every single player on this team combined with their champion of choice has been a big deciding factor in at least one of the rounds today. You know, be it Guitar Ration on Anarchy, which has just been that designated, give him quad damage and basically just wait for him to not have it because then you can start to play again. Um, Cyrux's defense on Slash has been impeccable. Uh, Poke Link's Scale Barrier has been on point. Legend's, you know, Acid Placement on Sawlag. Like, it has just been a perfect blend of champion to player, I think, so far. So I can't imagine we'll see them change. They're not going to be able to, at least for this map, because now we're going with the Trident Drew again. Now we're 20 seconds away from warm-up being over. We're going to get into our final series of the Grand Finals. Now, when these guys collided on Tempest Shrine last time, it was pretty much two almost made comebacks by Team ZR, which were unable to be completed, but it still resulted in essentially in the second, in the final round, it definitely was 100 versus 99, but other comebacks had to be made in the same map. So it was very close every single round. In this scenario, I feel like after the bracket reset, how this first map goes and the manner of which it goes might be quite foreshadowing for what we might expect later. Because it was super close before, if it's dominant for one team, that may show who has the momentum and what team could potentially be burnt out after a bracket reset. Well, considering both those rounds last time they were on Tempest Shrine came down to almost comebacks, I think it showed a few things. It was Team ZR's like, inability to close out at the time, but also TKG's inability to sort of hold on consistently for as long as normal. Now, for the first time, we see ZR actively go for Obelisk B. Normally, they went out of their way to get A, but this time, not going to be the case. Yeah, ETJ got caught a little bit off guard there, didn't really have the right weapon for the right time, taking a bunch of damage as he tries to change. Legend comes in with the defense, and that is going to allow them to very comfortably secure this power up too. But look at the amount of frags. Mag with the area denial on that super nail gun. It's a very popular strategy on this map. You have a lot of eyesight on Tempest Shrine to deny the power up. That's the tactical suicide. Was it though? I kind of look like it. Yeah, he, it was, it he, was. He it definitely was. shot the wall on purpose. Like, definitely, definitely. Oh, and there's that big damage roll coming through. Pokeling, unfortunately, going to be on the receiving end of that. Now, a complete turnaround. ZR managing to take hold of that first round, and now they have a very strong lead. I thought maybe TKG could just keep the ball rolling, as it were, and manage to start things off strong. But it has been a complete opposite thing, and now ZR are looking really good. Well, we did see uh, right there uh, an example of good communication there. I know Tito eventually went down, but he was actually aiming down that sort of LG line with the rail trying to pick people off. He actually had a line of sight on someone, but um, I think they must have communicated that there were two enemies up above. He immediately decided to turn around and go for the immediate threat, which was those two enemies up top with the quad LG. Unfortunately, he went down, but I think it shows good communication between the team itself. Indeed, a poke link going in for that ball rush now, though, but important for TKG being able to defend now, but won't matter as ETJ with a nice double kill on just a submachine gun. Not bad. Yeah, fresh off the spawn, if needs must, then needs must. Pokerlink, no spawning close to the rocket launcher, he'll be happy with that. He's a bit far away from the action. Oh wow, Mag with a quick immediate turnaround and a not at all charged ball rush is going to do enough damage to finish things off. Not bad. And now Tuto managing to slip the net, as it were, and now holds on to the obelisk itself. Now it's going to go up to 30 plus. Not too bad of a lead at all to the 10% that TKG currently have, and that power up not going to be up for a little while yet. Oh, lands on the gauntlet. That's going to hurt. I quite like that positioning, actually, because he was deliberately making sure he was standing almost like at the blind spot where Guitar Ration was likely to go down there. I mean, if he's going to jump down, he's not likely to turn around towards me immediately because there's so many other enemies nearby. But this is, there's one distinct difference. Very, very distinct difference. Um, no one really uh, in South America goes for the tactical sort of reset. I mean, consistently, like normally you would see it here if someone's about to go down, they might try and waste some time. We haven't really seen that strategy used on this map at all. And we've seen Tempest Shrine a ton today. It's an interesting observation, it could be for multiple reasons. Obviously, you're not just going to do it for the sake of it. It, is, of it course, does seem course. to be a little bit of a, not a last resort as such, but you can quickly see that it's not the right 
uh, you know, you're not going to safely get the soul away. You might be a bit more inclined to just fling it off the edge and go for the reset. But you are right. We're not saying we've seen too much. There's going to be another recapture. Team 2, uh, ZR, but I say 2Z. Uh, looking really good this round. This is a bit of complete turnaround from last time. Now, this Z appears a little bit earlier, but I can understand the mix-up. Come through. Misses a rail. That might be a little bit vital. We can see just how many of these heads are ranking up, and the frags are going too. And those two missed rails actually might guarantee me see it going down without getting a single frag to show for it, and it is going to be just that. But they did go down. They are likely to respawn a little bit closer to the obelisk than anyone of TKG, though, so it's not a huge issue. Normally, when you die at your obelisk, right as the soul gets captured, it does tend to sort of spawn you closer to the obelisk than the enemy actually is, so gives you a bit of a time to head off. Oh, that was an unfortunate fumble by Cyrax, being able to get the distance, but kind of getting caught on the wall there, trying to run through. Now you see Jay-Z getting chased, looks like he is, and won't be able to get away. It's Guitar Ratio managing to swoop in with that rocket launcher, trying to get away, using his in, uh, superior speed, scale bearer, nice quick rocket jump, and look at that! is the power of Anarchy in this game mode. If you give him any kind of space to work with in a rocket launcher to boost himself like that. Perfectly executed. And it didn't actually have much rocket set either, so it's cool. Nice injection coming through at the very least, and now TKG could start something here, but they are massively down on percentage, and that's it. Tuto just walks in and gets through. <laughs> the dodge on the bull rush. That was a very last minute. I mean, he was probably going to die anyway because he was surrounded, but... No one to head off. That was a very good fight for TKG. They get a little bit of percentage now while the rest of Team ZR So though power is going to be up in five seconds time. Do they decide to go for the soul here or do they just all in for the power up? So Cyrox is sort of foregoing everything right now for the mega health as it looks like ZR able to get hold of the quad damage. Uh oh, this could be bad. They haven't seen him. He's going to go down for sure here. Takes a lot of damage in the process, but ultimately will still be able to get off. And Poke Link will be the next one to fall down. Now, a lot of people went white. down there. Now, challenging someone with a quad LG fresh off the spawn is going to be kind of hard. They're going to spawn nice and close to the obelisk, so we are like to see at least one more fight. But no one's paying attention to Masita because there's too much threat in front to immediately pay attention to, but it did a good job of wasting time. After all that, though, Masita wiping out almost the entire team. The one member, Pokelink by himself, just running through at full speed. And Guitar Ration comes flying in with a nice double kill to Gauntlet and actually holds onto the soul for it. That was such perfectly played by Guitar Ration and Pokelink together. To be honest, I'm kind of surprised that actually happened. We saw so many members of TKG fall there, but they somehow got the soul and still brought it back. I mean, okay, scale bearer. That's why he had the ball rush. Managed to thread the needle and find that way through with the damage mitigation, and that's it. Now, how do you stop oh. a noobal object? See you later, legend. Sorry, I know you tried. There's another ball rush. Not a huge amount of damage because it is in fact a ball rush versus another ball rush. So that's probably not going to kill. Old Mag trying to get through, but has nowhere to get through at all forced to run through towards the jump pad, but it's actually going to be able to get away this time. That's huge. Look at how close this is. 63% yes, very weak. versus 65! Oh. Oak Link. Let's turn around. Oh no! Missed the throw again! The Misita flies in, picks it up off the ground, but hits the wall himself! This is just fumble after fumble! Yeah, there's a couple of little drops here and there, and I feel like it's going to show you know, maybe signs of definite nerves in this grand final scenario. You know, if it's causing you to make these little execution errors, it's going to happen. Mag flying through, doesn't have a lot of weapons though, but as I can say, that legend literally only 34 bullets left of a machine, a submachine gun, and that's all he has to fight with. He has to hope he can find something on the way. I mean, what could he have done there? He had 34 bullets, no acid spit, and not much health. He was pretty much like, if they don't see me, cool. If not, I mean, what can he do? All right, that's big though for Team ZR. They have the soul and they have the protection. This is best case scenario now. And finally able to recapture and get some percentage on the rise now. This is probably going to get them a nice chunk but exactly how much remains to be seen. As we see, he gets caught off in the middle. Takes so much damage. He has protection, even though he's going to survive here. Took a lot of damage in the process. I think uh, the Guitar Asian's going to try and get out of there. He kind of knows that's a fight he can't win. Oh no, I missed Rail from Legend though. If Legend got that, he would have been able to take the protection for himself and perhaps get out alive. But Misita is able to survive all of that, no matter the misses. And this has been a good turnaround for ZR. You can never count out either team here because that's the nature of sacrifice. ETJ getting a berserk kill. I think he's always going to be happy every time he gets one of those kills. But unfortunately, before he even gets a rail, Poker Link with that trade off. Going in with the ball rush. Hard to stop, especially with that damage mitigation. Now, this is about as close as it was last time they played on Tempest Shrine. So, no matter what happened in the, the Ruins map, like this is definitely a map they are perfectly matched on. I definitely say so. If ZR get this first round, it's a great start for them, of course, but. Oh, and Guitar Ration flying in with the gauntlet, but won't get the second one. This Tuto puts a stop to that shenanigans. Yeah, I think 
when you're almost dead, as always, get that 1-1. One, one. It's going to be worth the trade. If you're going to die, then try and at least take someone with you. It's been taken away, though. Looks like TKG. Cyrax is able to give his teammate safe passage, and Gitaration is able to get a safe drop-off. Still, though, has a super shotgun. Gauntlet is favoring the Gauntlet, definitely, as Mag cannot escape. Still got the Gauntlet out. Gitaration determined to just chop up as many people as he physically can. I reckon with this percentage, if te unless Team ZR drop it off right now, we're probably going to get one more protect. Uh, sorry, not protection, sorry, power up. Look at the timer. 10 seconds left. They have got access to the soul, um, almost. TKG defending really well, but I think that's why the heads are starting to go. They need to get this power up. They need to fight for it. Mag has decided to sort of stray away from the path and try and bank it on the final 2%, but you know TKG, they know they can't allow the drop. They had to put some resources towards that. And TKG, because of that, they have access to the quad damage. There was not enough heads there to fight, but here we go, the back and forth. Pokelink died at the time, but Guitar Ration's actually oh, on the no. spot to pick it up, and this is a problem for Team ZR. Uh-oh, can we see a comeback here off this quad? He's still got injection if he needs to pop it, but no! Didn't use it in time. And that actually gave the quad damage to Ichi as well, but uh, actually Legend getting a nice direct damage with the Acid Spit and Tuto now. I mean, how many people have this quad? It's, it is literally a cursed pickup as everyone that holds it seems to die straight away. Unless it's Masita who has a rocket launcher and enough stack to take the punishment. I wonder if that's going to what that might be what has won this round. And that one instance where Guitar Ration decided not to pop the injection, not to go towards health a little bit earlier, giving up the quad damage, allowing the back and forth exchange to happen. That might have been it. It's 1% left. They're still Team contesting, ZR. but they're dying one at a time. Is that going to be enough? He's still contesting here. Someone's on the way, but he's not going to get here in time. No, he's, he's not going to get there in time. I don't think he's going to get there. He's not at all. The first round goes to Team ZR. And that's already a better result than what they had last time. I mean, last time we were on Tempest Shrine, these two teams, it went down to last round and 99 to 100%. And and that really is... You can't get around from it. Even though Ruins was very one-sided, this was the map that they were super close. Now, it kind of looks like we've had a request for a restart. We'll find out what's going on here, but... Um in due time, we'll quickly find out. Yeah, looks like they've allowed a restart. So it's likely that we're going to sort of allow him to probably restart his game, I'm assuming is the course of action here. And uh, we're simply going to restart this map with the 1-0 uh, record. So while we go for this quick restart, I feel like what we can reflect on that first round is I'm expecting something very similar to what we saw before the reset. It was just as close, only this time, unlike the other two rounds where TKG were on the verge of having a comeback made against them, they sort of just... They clutched it out, right? They got that final percent and they took it two rounds in a row. Uh, pretty much the exact same circumstances. Only this time, under the same situations, it was in fact Team ZR that did the same thing back. So with that in mind, do you reckon Team ZR have like new life? You know, Do you think they're, they're a bit more pumped going into the next round? I mean, I honestly find it really hard to say because this was always a map that um, ZR were looking strong on earlier on. You know, e even before they looked good on Tempest Shrine. So I think no matter what happened on Ruins, this is clearly something they're happy to play on. So I don't think it's that much of a big deal that they kind of lost it being that close. You know, you said yourself, they they had the games to lose. Um, being from winners, you know, that, that was their reward for being there. They had the, uh, the wiggle room to make those mistakes, to get knocked into losers themselves and have the bracket reset. So the fact that they're then able to win the, 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 the ongoing round, I think it means that they're, at the very least, they're not playing worse because of reset. If anything, they're now playing better because they've realized, right, okay, guys, no more second chances. We've lost that right. Let's make sure we're bringing our A game. And that seems to be what we're seeing from them so far. I think um, with the exception being, it seems that TKG kind of still seem to have a little bit better control over the power-up in those crucial times. I think um, ZR are really good at getting the power-up or fighting for the power-up on its first respawn. But beyond that, it seems to be TKG are kind of getting the better of it uh, when it does respawn. So I've had one player rejoin, which is kind of waiting on our second now. Yeah, Legend's back in, Tuto is back in. I assume Tuto went for a restart as well. So we're going to be restarting this map. It's going to be a 1-0 lead for Team ZR. And I think that's pretty much showing that the wake-up call is kind of what you get rewarded at being in the Grand Finals on the winner's side. You know, just to remind everyone at home that for whatever reason may have just joined us, this is the Qualification Grand Finals. Whatever team wins this qualifies as the South American representatives 
at DreamHack Winter playing for a $200,000 prize pot against the best sacrifice teams in the world. Not only are you going to you know, have the chance to make this serious cash, you've got that accolade of being the absolute best team in your region for sacrifice. So you can be very proud of that result on top of the fact that you know it's going to be an offline land. DreamHack has such a rich history with Quake. You know, it's QuakeCon and DreamHack are you know, the two of the biggest lands in the game's history. So I think every team wants to make sure they're part of that history, much like the Quake World Champions. But also the fact that out of the two teams that are left, you know, unlike Duel, where two players will qualify from each region, there is one space for a team, for a region in Sacrifice at DreamHack Winter, which means that you are literally the only representative of that region there. So regardless who wins here, this is going to be the only South American Sacrifice team that will actually make it, which means that there's a lot of pressure. You know, all these players are going to want the right to be there to represent South America and also you know, play for that money. There's a lot of money on the line at DreamHack Winter and was it 12 teams total, I believe? Uh, from start to finish, you know, the two invited and then the rest all uh, you know, qualifying themselves through various weeks. So 12 teams total, you're going to be one of those 12, which means you are one of the strongest teams in the world by being there. I think no matter how the round went, right, in, on that Tempest Shrine, so we've just restarted, we're in the match right now, so we're going to be moments away from getting back into this map. Our players have restarted, so hopefully it should be all good to go. I think, um, but if the first round went dominantly, for TKG and they were able to essentially keep going and keep doing what they just did before the reset I would be almost inclined to just assume that that's probably going to be the result right the two that uh, TKG were going to essentially dominate if they get a fantastic first round it would potentially be a sign that maybe maybe Team ZR are just burnt out potentially because they can happen in grand final they've played it. all day the reset has happened and maybe it's just too much to ask it's too much pressure or it's going on for too long and one team just has more juice than you do however i think this reset has been a wake-up call so far uh if teams er take this second round as well and that two zero result i think the next map will be very very interesting indeed well, it's not going to show on the game itself, but as we have restarted mid-map, it is going to be a one-round advantage to uh, Team ZR. So it won't look like it, but we're going to go on the knowledge that it's one round up. So if ZR win the first round, we are just going to back out to the lobby and give that be map it. to them. But obviously, uh, Team uh, TKG are going to have to win two rounds as normal, and we'll go back to the lobby the old-fashioned way. So we'll make sure to remind you guys every now and then, just in case anyone forgets or anyone tunes in, sort of in the middle of this round. But we'll have to wait and see what happens as we go into what could be the final round of the first map of the Bracket reset. So they've had a little bit of time for a quick reset. So in many ways, actually, after a round that goes that close, uh, I feel like it's a way for some of these players to kind of just collect their th uh, thoughts and get a bit of steam. Some players might be quite happy that the timer uh, delay has kind of happened. You know, they've had that time to chat. They would be in comms the entire time, right? They will be discussing these tactics. All right, but this is a big thing. What obelisk do they go for? TKG, they are choosing. Hey, and there oh, we go. No! ZR, they made the read. That's where they were going to be. And what a beautiful play from Mag. Knowing that TKG were likely to go to A because they have been favoring this obelisk over B every single time. Mag charges straight there and with perfect placement of the ball rush has stolen it right from underneath them. And huge, massive Man, damage. damage. Massive, massive damage coming through and... As always, I think if that's going to be a good defense, we're going to see 30% by the time that quad damage is going to be over, and that is a great start for ZR. I mean, like you said it yourself, it was it was just a great read. They dedicated towards it. Mag has I mean, you been say they, I think it really was Mag, and then he was the one to take the quad damage. On Scale Bearer 2, this was perfectly played. Absolute 100% best possible start that Mag could have possibly had single by himself. Quad's just about to run out, but in many ways, the damage has been done. They've got that 30%. And that is going to be their reward for such a fantastically played start to this round. Also means that clearly Team ZR do not mind the fact that they have had to reset as already 40%. We might be just actually a few minutes away from going into our next map if this momentum continues. Legend now on the case, but only has a nail gun. That's not the best weapon to go for. And he is just getting lit up and ends up getting punched to death. I think the Doom Slayer. I mean, that's the story of Quake Champions, isn't it? Either it's it's going to be a five-minute round or it's going to be a 30-minute round. It depends on play styles. It depends on confidence. Uh, but play style is, is the big one, right? And I think it makes it opens up a level of just sheer unpredictability. Some of these rounds have gone for ages, but if it's a dominant map... I mean, the, the period between 0 to 100 is two and a half minutes, if it's uncontested. That could be a two and a half minute, three minute round. I know you've got to factor in the soul spawning, so that's closer to three minutes, but you get the idea. Uh, important cases that teams are 47 percent they're actually halfway out to uh, winning this round anyway and actually getting a couple of frags on the point itself so tkg they've lost the soul they are going to respawn in a way to try and stop them but tuto running quite easily through it seems wow and then hopefully coming through as well trying to get 
access to the soul again. Soul has been stolen away, but still 50%. There. That has that has officially put them over the halfway mark. And Tuto comes flying in with a gauntlet and undoing all that work. He's going to just naturally wait for the plasma trail to disappear, right? I know the rest of the team they can't really follow through, but it comes back to what we saw before because the power ups just spawned. Oh, they have the protection too, but he's very weak. Mag has to be very careful here. Now, uh, just like that, two small healths and the damage has been undone. I wonder if he ball rushes to try and actually get to the point first. I think he doesn't need to. You know, they've, they've just taken so many of those fights, he doesn't need to put any of those resources into it at all. Just sit there with the uh, protection. Don't allow the enemy team to get it. I mean, he's going to have to do so much work to take down it. And Cyrex goes down with a 100 damage rocket. Very impressive shot. But it was pretty much not possible for him to go down there. He's going for the ball rush, thinking he's running out of options. But actually, he doesn't need to. His team is there, ready and waiting to basically just save the day. I pick up all the frags, and Mag is still alive, but almost 90% already. This has been a fast turnaround for ZR, as they are very close to taking this first map and being one map away from qualifying. Oh, guitar, uh, guitar Asian was not ready for Mag to be there at all. Like, at no point did he look up there. I just don't think it was in his mindset. But there's the rail. This might undo some of the damage. They have to push in. They have to push in now. 3%. They cannot afford to take it. 99%. Is that going to be the end of the around is this going to be the dominant result team ZR have been looking for for so long it's looking likely and it is going to be the round for team ZR one map up in this bracket reset and they've just stolen the momentum away very cleanly indeed very well played all around I mean I'm not going to lie it was very up in the air as to what was going to be happening here you know is it going to be like you said will ZR be burnt out after the reset will they lose the morale knowing that they've basically just lost a series against the team that they uh, effortlessly seemed to deal with earlier on in the tournament, but it seems like whatever it was, you know, it kind of really relit that fire underneath them, knowing, okay, guys, right, we're now in losers bracket, right? That that's it. We've we've lost that chance, and they have ran away with it as they very closely took the first round, but the second round was it could not have been more one-sided. I think that was incredibly played, and now we go to lockbox as our next map. When you're on the winner's side and the bracket gets reset, it's definitely a wake-up call, isn't it? It, it? It's essentially the game and the tournament telling you, right, guys, that just happened. You need to kick it up a notch, otherwise this team is going to probably take it over you two times in a row, and it's going to be the, 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 the best team of the day is going to take this tournament. So I think the fact that the bracket was reset, it can do a lot of things to mental composure as a player, no matter what the game mode is, sacrifice um, or duel, no matter what happens. But the fact they were able to take that so dominantly in the second round is so important for ZR to stay in this fight. Because TKG, they've tasted defeat at the hands of ZR before. They've been there. They've done that. They've lost a series in the winner's finals. So it's not like a loss will tilt the team because they went into the grand finals having lost a very dominant 2-0 and were still able to take that win. So I think both of these teams now, they've been able to really experience the same level of defeat, which has sort of brought it into a more of a neutral scenario. But Lockbox, very excited to see what happens here. Yeah, but it looks like neither team really hesitating to lock in the same champions as before. But if there's any time that TKG were going to swap something up and uh, make a change, now is the time. Okay. And it looks like they actually will by throwing Galena into the mix for the first time this weekend. So it sets basically Galena instead of Doomslayer, right? That's the switch. Yeah, indeed. Or was that, wait, was it was it TKG that picked that or was it ZR? It depends on what the sides are. We'll have to double check during the warm-up. But if it was um, Galena on the flip side, yeah, um, it's... Oh, no, it's a slightly different. Mistita. It's uh, no oh, slash. Oh, it's slash. I'm swapping right. the slash for Galena. Interesting map to swap slash out, though, if I'm being completely honest. You know, considering the, the, the plasma trail area denial on lockbox, we've seen that be crucial time after time after time. But Galena has seen a lot of gameplay on Sacrifice on lockbox specifically. She's very good on this map. Yes. I know uh, if anyone plays Team Deathmatch and fights against multiple Galenas, then have fun. And it's uh, it's quite a difficult thing to deal with, but I know that's obviously a bit more gimmicky. On, but... on Lockbox, on Lockbox. Okay. But uh, on, on this map in particular, I think she's very effective because the most common way of maneuvering on a lot of these maps is, you know, teleporters and jump pads, particularly on Lockbox, uh, to sort of really get that elevation using teleporters is quite a common tactic. She pretty much just denies those, right? And even if she hasn't got a, a totem there, using it in itself is a risk. More importantly, though, if she's able to straight up deny near the power up where you have to use a teleporter without pretty much it's teleporter or rocket jump rocket jump is self damage and seeing as there's always so much action taking place on the power up itself you don't really want to do self damage getting to that point and if she's able to deny the one area you have to go to to take the soul that's a very dangerous ace and hole to have in a grand final scenario this could be the final map but it does require you to be in position before it spawns and if you're kind of fighting from the back end 
uh, as that Galeno means you can never really position yourself to do that in the first place to be dangerous. But I think if there's one team here that has the space to make uh, a change like this, it is going to be ZR, considering they are 1-0 up right now. If they lose the map, it's just going to be tied up, but they will have one final chance. However, if this goes right for them and TKG get caught off guard and aren't ready to play against Galena, they will re uh, you know, potentially win off this if they can play around it correctly. So this might be our final map in this grand final. South American Sacrifice Qualifier for DreamHack Winter. Very exciting to find out what's going to happen in two seconds. This soul is going to spawn, but they're trading the frags back and forth. Who's it going to go to? Looks like Team ZR get a bucket full of frags and more. Mag more than healthy enough to go for this drop-off. And there is the Obelisk dropped off in quick fashion and gives them enough time now to decide how they fight for the power-up. Has a nice amount of life remaining as well. 140, that's plenty to get a lot of damage. That's picked up a shotgun and a nail gun, at the very least mag. Try and go through here. Ooh, dead body flying through. Power up going to be up any second now. And it's quad damage and it goes to mag, who has been doing a lot of work in terms of frags over the last couple of matches. Got a decent chunk of armor, got a nice amount of health, and he's got lots of weapons. Rocket launcher up here. I mean, this is one of the best weapons. To, this is one of the best situations to use the rocket launcher. This high ground, a common scenario. You can see two members here of uh, ZR using the weapon up here because it's just a very common area. Hard to really contest. Huge damage coming out, forcing the teleporter. Legend was guaranteed to die the second he touched that teleporter. So though Mag getting taken down quite a lot, hasn't really done a lot of work with this core damage, to be honest. Right, point blank, this Plasma Trail. He's having rings run around him. Cannot get the frag and he's gonna die. Drops the quad damage after getting only one frag that didn't go quite as well as we were expecting it to. It for. kind of looked to me like TKG didn't really pile into the point while quad damage was a threat. I feel like they waited a little bit until quad damage was finished and then they decided to push in because outside of the point, there wasn't every single member of Team ZR on that obelisk, right? They were sort of taking them out outside. And the second they knew the quad was gone, they could freely run in and take the soul, which is exactly what they just did. I put it back down, poke link, and then drop it off. And again, scale bearer. I haven't seen too much of him on lockbox historically on uh, sacrifice, but today definitely seems to be to change that up a little bit. Oh, and that's the nail gun doing a lot of damage. And Tuto's going to get that 1v1 nail gun versus rocket launcher. I love the dodging. Wait, you know, right, right before the rockets took place, he would just move in the opposite direction. It just comes down to just great awareness. Uh, ETJ is just a surgeon with this nail gun right now. He's a carpenter, and he's like putting a carpet down. Oh, is that because he's got nails? I yeah. see. I, I see mean, how it is. Do, do, car is it, do carpenters put carpets down with nails? I don't know. I'm not a carpenter, they, so that's actually do, a very they? hard to answer question. But either way, for like, the sake of my analysis, let's just pretend that it's true. <laughs> Here we go, though. Teams, they are. The, uh, the fact is, they've been able to sort of bring the soul back in quite quick fashion. TKG weren't really able to get a huge amount of percentage before that was taken back. But here comes the, the uh, power up again. Putting a shed together. Oh, you've been That's thinking really of an analysis the entire time. Yeah. Well, how else can I fit this analogy? He's a builder now. I mean, you definitely use nails if you're putting wooden structures together. I agree. Oh, quite get the but right as I'm time. talking about that, TKG have picked up the protection and it goes to Legend who actually 60 health might not look like a bunch, but when you've got protection, you can basically just times up by four. But Suicide isn't happy with it at all and is still rather giving it away to Guitaration. Well, they're going to know that the small healths are going to be down there and they weren't taken at the time. So as Guitaration makes that passage all the way back, he's going to be able to pick those up and undo any damage he's been taken because he's got the protection and an injection. I mean, it was a great idea. He's going to get the speed boost from the injection as well. Tries to ignore, as he always has been doing. I think he doesn't take every single fight. He is in trouble oh, now. Tuto chased that one a little bit too hard, I think. There was a rocket ready and waiting for him on the other side of that. But the important thing is that the soul's been in transit for the most of the time. So even though TKG have had it for a while, they haven't dropped it off. And Pokelik running oh! through the jaws of death. And he manages to survive just ever so slightly, but not enough. I mean, if you're going to take that much damage, you are on, you are on limited time the second you finish that bull rush. Been able to defend a little bit. The problem is, again, it comes back to the fact that they've not really been able to drop the soul off. It's, they've done a good job of, of having it in hand, but the percentage says otherwise. All right, this is good for them, though. They've managed to create a little bit of stability after a long back and forth, but Team ZR on that 67%, they are quite a way into this round already. Got a couple of frags, too. The soul has been taken away. Flash comes running in, full speed ahead. Oof! Pokelink was in a very tough situation there because he had nothing to work with. He had a basic machine gun. He had a rocket launcher, but it was out, out of ammo. Uh, and realistically, I mean, apart from provide that supporting fire, there wasn't a huge amount he could do. Tarishin able to take it, though. But oh! gets it. There we go. Gets stopped dead in his tracks. But Galena, very little health remaining. And it's good like there is enemies everywhere. Misita tries to go towards the right. Unfortunately, that was not the right route to take. Unfortunately, as well, you're not really able to, to gauge that unless there's communication. If you don't see them, you can't really call it. Could have gone left because there was no one there, but there's no way to tell. 
So far, Team ZR having a little bit of trouble breaking into this defense, but the power-up is up, and it also goes towards TKG, but he drops it, and ETJ is going to be there to pick it up. Again, a lot of frags with his shotgun, putting the squad damage to work. Now, he still needs to put himself in harm's way to get this soul. I don't know if he's going to take the soul himself. No, the fumble! That might be quite really a huge error. to make that kind of mistake when you have quad damage on your side. And uh, he's just even a little bit like there, right? A little bit of miscoordination. Did he, did, did, did he try and pick up the, the soul again after berserking? Well, I'm assuming he thought he had the soul or had forgot to pick up the soul. So it turned around temporarily. But at that time, like his teammate had already picked that up. So he wasted some time. And then he'd already committed to a double jump and he fell down the ledge. And see, are they here trying to stop getting away? Legend very low. Tuto managing to pick it up. Throws it away, but Again. another fumble hits the wall. That's happening way too often. But it is going to allow Mag to pass that over. And all four of them here, though. Team ZR a little bit clumsy, but they were able to salvage the whole situation. And now they're in the lead again. And a significant amount of time away from the next power-up. But Katarishi just runs in, tries to steal it away, but won't get very far. But that's a big amount of frags coming through for TKG. So they're probably going to take the soul away. Legend able to do just that. The Legend, I'm not sure if that acid spit was intentional. May have just sort of like double-tapped the F key there to drop the soul off. But the result was losing Acid Spit for quite a substantial amount of time. Oh, I see that's stuck in a bit of a difficult situation here. This middle is... Oh, no! Going a bit too fast. He's going to get, yeah, guaranteed death. It's going to get stuck in that little spiral. I mean, you really are at the mercy of the game. Deciding when to throw you down there. Trying to get through, but he has got... Oof, Mag running full speed ahead and uses that speed with the ball rush to cover a massive amount of distance. I mean, that right there is why Scalebearer is so good in Sacrifice because he just... It, it, it immense back and forth where people are dying left, right, and center just trying to get the soul. All he has to do is charge into it, kill anyone along the way, and just walk it all the way Wait, back in. Mag didn't try and contest Legend there. He saw Legend on the Obelisk, but he kind of just ran the other way. He has got protection, though. Um, so I feel like, you know, part of that might be that... Mag decided to take the power up instead. The problem is it's pretty far. You know, he kind of actually, he went in the complete opposite direction to where Legend went. If you wonder, by the time he reaches the Obelisk, a lot of this protection will be gone. He's going to get it now. And gets a lot of armor shards at the very least. That's going to do a good job of keeping him alive. And again, he's just going to laugh off this damage for now. He needs to get to the Obelisk as soon as he can. Someone Here comes Cyrex. Oh, beautifully played by Cyrex. Just painting that area denial. And that's a rock and a hard place, isn't it? Gauntlet or Plasma Trail, really towards choose your fate, really. Gonna drop down, Tuto here ready, but they're gonna win this quick little 2v2. No, Legend gets one of the frags. Hoaklink runs through with that full rush, has a lot of health. Unlikely to die before he gets there now. And this is almost an eight minute round. Cyrex just got a triple Gauntlet as well, by the way. Impressive. Speed. Still though, this is a going on an eight minute round and this is just the start of this map. I mean, that's, that's the thing we can't forget, right? It, it's round one. And this isn't even potentially the final map. If TKG get this map and they put it 1-1, one, one, we still have an entire map left on our hands. But you know, ZR, they don't want to be in that position, but we could potentially have ways to go. Maybe. We'll find out in a few minutes time. I think it a lot of it really rides on how this first map goes. Because like I said, it's, it's already been going on for quite a while. But there we go. Nice ball rush coming out of Pokelink. But Tuto is ready to hit him with a rocket launcher in the behind. Now, I, I will be honest, so far, I've, I've not seen a huge amount of an impact made by Galena just yet. I'm not sure if uh, losing the Slash has been worth it so far. I know it's just round one, so there's plenty of time left to see a real significant difference be made, but... They are winning. Regardless, regardless how some of the fights have been going, they are still in the lead, though. That's the thing. Like, Team ZR, they might be dropping the soul quite quickly, but they are still ahead to 91%, but at the rate TKG are kind of bringing this one back, that could very quickly be evened out with the quad damage goes towards Mag. You know, he's probably heading straight here as we speak. And you can just look at him. He's got loads of health. He tries to pepper out the acid. Somehow, actually, none of the acid misses. Must have just been a little bit too high, but I mean, Mag jumps down. I think he's seen him. Yeah, just waiting for the rail. And there we go with the damage done. Can't put too much of a risk down there. I mean, that's exactly why you have to be so careful, because yes, you've got quad damage, but you're still going to be vulnerable to any damage you take. So if you die and lose quad, you've just given them the advantage, but Wonderfully played. Team ZR have maintained the quad. They may be able to get a couple more frags as they escape, but will it be enough to survive and win the round? That seems to be a bit of a tough decision. Do you give the armor shards to the soul carrier or the quad damage wielder? Okay, ends up going to the soul carrier there. Mega health, gonna pick him up. 
Already someone here waiting, though. It's going to be hard for him to drop this off safely. He does manage to do so, but it's going to die immediately, but takes one with him. But it's actually an important yeah, trade. The one he took out was Pokerlink, and Pokerlink had a nice stack, so I feel like that was very important. The problem is they weren't able to get much with it because Guitar Asian, in the same amount of time, has picked up the soul. He's dropped it off. There we go. Very close to tying things out. If he wins this 1v1, actually doesn't need to. This has just very quickly become a three versus one. Oh, dear. But that's 95 to 94. They're actually still in the lead. And the entirety of the team is here trying to stop the ball rush, trying to go through. But the Plasma Trail manages to get past it. But he is definitely still being chased. A few health pickups is going to do a good job. But he is still holding on to the soul. And they are shooting rockets all over the place trying to stop him. But he has got some support. But Pokelink is there, ready and waiting to stop him. He has the soul, but he's once more surrounded. Plenty of enemies nearby, surviving with one HP, but only for how long? Chuto with the double gets taken out as well. Another close round. I mean, do we expect any different from these two teams? They have been back and forth the entire day. Sarax trying to find a safe way through, using that crouch slide speed. Doing well for himself, but here we go. He's just waiting for him. Oh! And Cyrax Mac goes in full speed, but Pokelink again. This is just trading frag for frag. Very close as we get down to the final stages of this round. He has some people here waiting, but he dropped it off in time. The power-up has spawned, but does anyone even have time to fight for it? I'm not so sure. 1% left. It's currently not being used, but the protection goes to the TKG. This should be guaranteed. He's got protection. What can they do to stop him? He gets the gauntlet as well. Deary me. And there's the injection. He just tops up back up again. They almost got him dead, but he had the gauntlet the whole time and the injection ready. But in that sort of exchange, they lost the soul, but they were able to take it back. I think that's it. Is he going to waste time? He's there in time, but no! Gets deleted the second he puts a foot into the point. And that one protection. The second they got that power up, that was enough. That was a hard fought round one. It was almost a 12 minute round as well. Woo. We are going down to the absolute wire. I think this is probably the closest grand finals we've had so far. Still though, TKG, they need this map just to tie things up and it is in fact ZR that are currently in the lead, but it does mean that both teams still playing very well. But the problem is Team ZR, they had a really strong start, but they just seem to really lose the ability to hold onto the soul the longer the map went on. That's going to be quite difficult though as the round progresses because they had that phenomenal start too. Phenomenal start. Early soul drop off, they got the early power up. ETJ with that double kill on the Berserk. I mean, we can't forget how useful the Berserk can be at the very beginning when people are kind of stuck to their default weapons. If he's got that 75 damage punch that you can use at quite rapid rates versus starting weapons, it's a fantastic beginning to use a Doom Slayer. Now, Mag did die for that, but he was able to at least choose the obelisk he wanted. But Guitar Ration is immediately here, ready to try and pick up straight away. Oh! He just flies into a scale bearer with the gauntlet ready. Here comes the power up. Well, damage is indeed, but doesn't look like any one of uh, ZR is ready to pick it up. Probably going to go towards. Yeah, well, BTKG, but he doesn't last long. Yeah, indeed. We're able to recover. And he goes to Guitar as well. This is huge. He's kind of been one of those dominant just 1v1ers the whole time, but now giving him core damage, that's dangerous. It's actually unfortunate. Mag tried to use his ball rush, but he hit the uh, pillar on the way. So he kind of took a bit of unnecessary damage and lost his ability. Bringing the soul back. Completely met, but they just get frag after frag, so it's still in their favor, and that's going to be climbing an amazing amount of frags there for Poker Link. Getting the last hit every time. No sequence, that's the damage that Quad can do. Even though they're out all week, they're going to drop it off for sure, but how long can they defend without any health? Oh, the suicide, that is unfortunate. ETJ ready here and waiting again. I think he knows he can only really push in when his team is ready, though. You can get frags on the point, but. He hasn't got a rail. You know, the rocket really is his best weapon here. Oh, the Berserk doesn't allow him to survive long enough. Taration, can he get the drop? Math. Cyrex, more than healthy enough to drop that instead. Again, 2C has a decent start, but it's, it's their ability to hold on to the soul, which has been really hurting them. It seems like they're, they're very hasty to try and just pile in. As soon as they can capture, they will, even if there's most of TKG ready to just basically claim it back immediately. You said 2Z again, by the way. Did I? I think it's been a long day, and I think it's an inevitable mistake to make, but I just wanted to point that out. Deary me. Dun, 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 dun. I mean, I mean I, I, it's, I've really got an excuse for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying the wrong name. <laughs> but here we go, ZR. I mean, they've lost the lead. Before we can, I mean, just even that mini discussion, right? They've, they've taken all that percentage and it's continuing to go. Having a hard time. And TKG make it 1 1. This has been a long game and is continuing to be just that. But it still seems really hard to call the outcome because even though TKG are, are winning currently, you know, we, we've seen how quickly that can very much go the other way. But ZR now looking good for it. They're holding on to the soul. They are still on a tournament map here if they can win these next couple of rounds, even though it has looked hard for them. 
But I feel like it's going to be easier said than done, right? I mean, they've got protection. That's a great start for it, them It's there. a big change of pace, considering they have been consistently losing the ability to control power up for a little while now. But a nice direct, though. ETJ doing so much work now, and they're holding on to the Obelisk. Now, they need to set up a defense and stick to it, because that's what they've been struggling with big time. They've been getting hold of the, uh, of the Obelisk, but it's just actually holding it for a significant amount of time. That's where they're struggling. The issue ETJ is going to have is, actually saw he thought he had a little bit of extra rockets. It's going to be swiftly undone, because he did sort of get it from his fallen teammate, but I think the rocket, some of the uh, players, I, think, I believe the rocket was uh, somewhat changed in terms of how much ammo you pick up, so I think it actually might be having a bit of an effect on some of these players. Being a bit more used to having the extra five, perhaps, but Pokling doing a lot of work. Team CR, however, managing to get a lot of percentage up. They have a lot of bodies on the point, but so far, no one trying to contest. It looks like Guitaration is here trying to do just that, but absolute chaos as there is frags going on all over the place and ETJ comes flying in and Tuto getting two gauntlet kills of his own. Three melee kills immediately. Going to hold on to that defense for Team ZR. Now they've, they've got a good streak going here. Definitely have a good streak. If they get that 60%, they keep it going. They get this round. I mean, they'll, they'll be on tournament point. They've looked behind pretty much this entire round. We actually see there that the uh, Galena totem will sort of temporarily keep people nice and topped up. Also forcing you to destroy it, which, I mean, one rocket towards a totem rather than the enemy team is sometimes enough time spent to guarantee a death. And there we go, Cyrex was not ready for that totem. He ran face first into that one. He also just ran out of lightning gun ammo at the time as well. And now uh, Guitar Ration trying to safely get through back, but looks like he might try and find a way. No, he is getting stopped dead in his tracks, but ETJ will fall immediately. Now we're just a complete exchange, frag for frag, fighting for this soul. It kind of looked like Guitar went the wrong way there. I'm not sure if that was like a Duke attempt uh, to maybe sort of get, take a part of the enemies were unlikely to be, but he just kind of went face first. Immediately tried to turn around in two, so I'm not sure if that was uh, intentional direction there. Now, is uh, Mishita purposefully waiting around for this power up or? Oof, goodbye, legend, as the quad damage now goes towards Mishita, who will die immediately and drop the soul at the time. So gave up both the objective and the power up in a single death. It makes you wonder if it was worth Mishita hanging around. Oh, he got off from the grave, but it wasn't enough to stop the soul, was it? I almost thought maybe he was going to sort of drop the soul and then drop the totem behind the teleporter just to sort of get that bit of denial. But I think his goal was to just take Legend away from the quad damage. Unfortunately, giving that up, I mean, look at this. They've dropped it off. They're climbing the lead. It's very difficult for Pokelink to be stopped in the scenario. He's got too much health. He's going to get any amount of armor from a dropped corpse. And I mean, that's a great amount of percentage that they haven't been able to challenge at all. On the verge of uh, making things even too. And the percentage won't be the only thing that's even if they win this, being a 1-1 one, one map situation, but it then will be we, down to the wire. We have to remember the third map is going to be Ruins of Sarnath, which was very one-sided for TKG before. So you know that, I mean, even if ZR are able to win this uh, this round, like they, they can't really afford for it to go to a Game 3, because the third map is going to be something that they definitely didn't look so good on before. I uh, can't quite slip the net. Try to get to the health items, but there in time. I think actually both now, both players, like teams being not impatient, but they're really trying to pile in as fast as possible. And we see are kind of getting stuck. Oh, down the funnel, no. But he's oh, just no. delayed the inevitable. I'm not quite sure what that was about. I think he must have tried to rocket boost himself back up there, but he fumbled it a bunch of times and was just a sitting duck for all of that duration. That's trying to <laughs> defy gravity, but in the end, gravity always wins. Deary me. I mean, can you imagine? Difficult situation. And the problem is this late on, it wasted a lot of time as well. Mag, though, using that ball rush is going to die during it. Too much damage mitigation, but the problem is they... As you know, he has got a lot of bodies around him, so, sort of supporting on the obelisk, so Team ZR looking very good to hold on to this for a little while longer. As they still are in the lead, even though TKG had it for a long time, Team ZR are still ahead now. Oh, that has been not quite as coordinated. Definitely now they've got some stability. We can see some Galena totems going up. Mag is looking pretty good, but the protection up any second now. It looks like TKG going to get it, and it went to Qatar Ration. I don't know how much longer Team ZR can actually defend against this now. But clearly it was it was a decision that TKG decided to make. You know, they're going to go, look, I know they're going to be pretty much, you know, 8% away from winning if we put all of our resources into getting this power up. However, if we get this power up, all they have to do is hold off for 30%. If they can win this, uh -oh. This will be completely worth the risk. And it's a calculated decision. And I wonder, will it work out? It's looking like it might do so far. They're going to get the drop. They've got a little bit of protection, but it's not going to be enough for a couple of frags. Probably one more, but not even for that, in fact. Does get the frag anyway. Now, they have to defend from start to finish. They cannot afford to give ZR this advantage now. They've only got 8% left to take. But all the pressure is now in ZR's court. There's not going to be a power-up for a long time. They have to get in immediately as 80%. They do have a lead, but it will mean nothing if they can't stop this defense from TKG, who are now approaching that 10% mark. We are getting to the end. Oh, a couple of frags coming through for ZR. 
This could be the start. Still taking it, Legend, doing, doing everything he can, but he just, oh no, the Berserk from behind. BTJ has the soul, but how far can he get with it? That is ultimately going to be the question, because they are still there. They're going to respawn in between. They're running through. He's trying to get through, but he hasn't got the he hasn't got the team here to back him up. That's going to be an issue, because you can just look at how aggressive TKG are being. And that's three versus one. Can he survive this? I'm not sure. Passes the soul back right before he goes in for the charge, so he accidentally threw the soul forward. 2-2, two, two, though, able to take the soul immediately. This is definitely still a winnable situation for ZR if they can get away from this half of the map. As that lightning gun just gave him a lot of speed boost, but he's still getting checked. Can he get to the He can indeed. Doesn't have protection. Uh, oh doesn't my have no though, so it's going to be difficult for him. He's got a lot of teammates here making it easier, but there's someone waiting. It's going to be Legend spits acid all over him, and Legend single-handedly stops him from capturing. That was almost so perfectly executed. Oh, well. but he gets mag it. with that choo-choo to maybe win the round on that alone. This has been a series of ridiculous plays. The amazing dodging from Tuto, the decision-making, getting the Mega at the last minute. But wait, they're piling in. They do get two frags. Two frags coming out of Pokerlink now has the soul, but for how long? Only seven HP. ET ETJ with this Berserk. Is that going to be enough to finish? They've got quad damage. This might be the round. Yeah, Cyrax actually able to steal quad damage during that entire situation. If he can defend by himself, which is he looking good to do, has plenty of health. He's going to take the soul away, and now they have the transit. We are oh, 99 no. to 98. No, they have again. the soul, and they have quad damage. No, Cyrax is running in by himself. So much frags coming through on the warpath. And Guitar is actually going the opposite way, not sticking with the team, trying to be sneaky here. But dies <gasps> on the way. That's crucial. But Legend is able to pick up the soul. He, he gets taken well. out. He is weak also. Tuto with the pickup. There's no one here to challenge. And he got health along the way because of the totem. Is that going to be the round winning play? Oh my days. The midair comes through. Guitaration. He had no choice but to pile in as fast as possible. And he ate a rocket in the face for it. And this is another 99 to 100% round. We are getting down to the wire every time now we are in a crucial situation because this is more important for zr than it might seem because we are now in a situation that if zr win this round they will win today's tournament and qualify for dreamhack winter as south america's representative in that global finals but if tkg win the round we're going down to map three which is going to be ruins of sarnath which is a map that zr did not look very comfortable on before the reset this has been a long grand finals and we might have plenty more left to go, but not if Team ZR can say anything about it. Guitaration, he's set the tone. He's dropped the soul. Obelisk B. I mean, they're getting this early lead. They pile in, obviously, to try and fight for this power-up. Power up. The power-up being up soon is really important. And already a lot of frags. That's probably going to be a guaranteed power-up for ZR, considering three of TKG have just dropped as it respawns. It's going to go towards Mag. Mag, yeah. And uh, Scaleberry, he's got his charge ready. He's got the shotgun, he's got a rocket. He's, he's got more than enough equipment to fight for this. I actually like the fact that Mag is the one that's not putting himself in harm's way. He's probably going to make passage with this charge. Quad damage charge. See you later, mate. Oh, oh goodbye. Not even a scale bearer can survive a max speed quad damage ball rush. Absolutely not. Get out of the way. Now, there's plenty of people here to fight. He still needs to drop it off. And here he comes from behind. Gets his revenge, in fact. Soul is now making passage back. Oh, unfortunately, we weren't able to get a single percentage through that. And TKG now with a commanding start to this. Big damage on that rocket. It's going to force him away. Likely to go down because of it too. TJ is going to try and survive. Wasting a little bit of time, but not enough. Legend capitalizes on the bounce. Oh, Tuto just... trying to get back, but Gataration just swoops in the last possible second and now after all that TKG still have the soul Team ZR unable to get anything at all I feel like there were so many ridiculous moments in the end of that second round it's, it's, it, you can't even pinpoint any specific one it was ridiculous dodging by Tuto it was then amazing positioning by Legend and then that ridiculous double charge by I believe it was Mag at the time the first one <laughs> the first, yeah, the first, Mag, the the first one was Mag it's just crazy. Insanity from start to finish. And I mean, they, they have had, they've had no time to reflect on it. Within two minutes, this round is, you know, almost halfway done for TKG. You've had no time to reflect on what the hell just happened. Oof. Swift super shotgun to take out oh, Tarish immediately, but Cyrus comes swooping in with the gauntlet again. How many times are we going to see a gauntlet just be an absolute denial of any momentum? The quad's going to be up in due time. TKG, get this. Oh! 
It's around the corner, Max. I mean, we're talking about Max double charge. He just gets another one. And but it's allowed quad damage, and it goes towards TKG, I think. Unless, no, did he just drop it? I believe Tito might have got it and then instantly died. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, of course. It was still up there. Picked it up, but then died straight away. So, technically, still on the spawn point. Or it's our race soon enough. to follow with that 39 HP. But he's dodging these rails, gets a return Very off his own. Nice shot from the... Not even looking down the side. That was just straight up from the hip. But as long as he's up here, actually, I know it. Yeah, wow. as long as he remains up there, it's going to just waste that quad damage time. But in some ways, the quad damage time can afford to be wasted for TKG if they've got the lead. Team ZR, they do have it for now, but it's contested Obelisk. It's got quad damage, so shouldn't lose it, but no, it gets taken away relatively easily. And that, the competition is directly above them, so they have no choice but to try and head off. Might get a couple of frags. He does manage to take it. Actually, it wasn't, in fact, a quad damage rocket. That was 100. Mag here with a single-handedly drop it back off again. Mag has just been a knight in shining armor for Team ZR right now. With the soul store on immediately, but gets taken down. Even though this was a really good start for TKG, ZR managing to get some work on the board now. I mean, they just got a bunch of frags in a row. That's going to be a nice chunk uncontested by the time they get back. Guitar Ration having to pop his injection to put himself healthy. That was a fantastic sneak attack. There was no way either of those guys were ready for that rocket jump. Caught off guard completely and a triple kill to finish it. That by himself has just completely seized control of this soul as he's trying to get away. Oh no, his teammate died and they are here again, ready and waiting. And ETJ going to pop his Berserk, trying to drop this off and build up that percentage as much more as he can. But again, he's waiting here for him. Tries to get a punch, but misses it and then misses the follow-up rocket too. Cyrax is here, ready to get it back, but there's a nice rocket. And again, everyone else on ZR is getting so many frags. Just look at that kill feed. And it's crucial. Absolutely crucial. I mean, if they can keep this up, I mean, in 20 seconds, this power-up's going to be spawning. If they can maintain this level of control over these frags and keep TKG behind, they will have an easy time taking this power-up. They pile in. Guitar takes big damage. He's been hit by another rocket after the injection, so he's going to be very weak to fight. Pokerlink tries to sneak in. However, if ZR get this power-up, they will swiftly take that back, I have no doubt. But it's looking like a pretty close fight for it. The protection gets picked up by Masita. Now has it, but, but he's going the wrong lost. way. Yeah, the soul was lost at the time. He's chasing this. They actually, really want to kill him, but Guitar Ration is going to die for it anyway. I think he kind of knew he was going to die there. Pokelink actually not capturing it until he waits for this, until he sees this protection be gone. I actually quite like the patience. I there. mean, that's a classic strategy. If you know the enemy team has access to the power up, then you're not going to know where they are, right? So if he's just hiding there in the base, they may not be ready for him to actually be in this location, you know? So this entire time, they're just wasting. As you can see, Misita, nowhere to be found. Absolutely nowhere. So that was perfectly executed, and it's going to be one less power-up that TKG have to worry about. Jumping through a lot of rockets on the way, and the protection now gone, but it has given ZR time to get where they need to go. And Pokelink dies actually pretty much immediately, and they still have the soul. Tuto manages to get it. Has his whole team here ready to step in. And there we go, Mag clearing the way with that ball rush. You get another one on the other end of it too. And Mag. that ball rush has been absolutely insane today. I've just head off by so many people at once. Mag though has the soul. Can he drop off? No! The mid-air gauntlet. That was perfectly executed. Managed to drop off the soul first though, even though it's swiftly taken away by Guitar Ration, but that one few seconds of stalling has actually given his team time to come back and Guitar Ration trying to zip away through the top way. Managing to get past, takes a lot of damage on the way though, has to be very careful now. This is ridiculous. 52% versus 51. I mean, this is insanity. What we expected though, two evenly matched teams. And it's a good story so far. I mean, two teams that whoever wins will have the accolade of strongest team in South America and they're both just fighting for their lives to achieve that. Ooh, oh, Mag getting another ball rush frag, but it won't be enough. Acid will take him down this time as Guitar Ration is back. Oh dear. I mean, yeah, I had the Gorn out in that situation. He's a bit too far away, pushed back by the LG. A little bit of a guaranteed death scenario, I feel. And Mercedes just needs to sneak by here. Looks like he's actually been able to. That's going to be a clean drop off. All right, and again, we're looking back to this dead even game. It's even. <laughs> There's the power up, the quad damage. Can Misita oh, wow. win it? Can Ooh. he win the 1v1? Yes, he actually did, Misita. Maybe not until the very, very end. Oh. He was able to do a ton of damage there. Pokling commits suicide? I don't really know how that happened. Wasn't he ball rushing? Did I... he have a nail gun out and maybe he shot the wall? He might He might have hit the ball rush and then immediately nail gunned or something. But either way, moving swiftly on, they've taken the lead. ZR, this is fantastic. They have a nice amount of this quad left too, about a quarter of it. That should be enough for a couple of frags. I and mean, we need just a one-man army at this stage. All right, and Mesita's actually bought enough time for some of her teammates to, to get here as well. Even though it's three members of TKG, they are dropping one at a time as ETJ pops the Berserk mode and just starts flinging fists all over the place. And there we go, another totem on the point. That's been nice regeneration. There we go, comes flying in though. 
I think one of those totems though did connect. They're very weak. Very, very, very weak. But Guitaration. He's going to get those two health. Just met swiftly. Oh, wow. Three of, all three of them get wiped out. And Legend oh, follows no! as well. That's a disaster for TKG as now. Team ZR are going to be able to drop this off and try and get a few seconds to recuperate and get themselves back up to full health. But it's going to be tough because Mag is very weak. They've got 10%. 10% is what separates them between winning this tournament, going to DreamHack Winter and staying at home. You know they want this. But the frags wrapping up TKG gets one of the bull rush. Mag gets what we know he's been doing this entire series. But Cyrex fumbling the toss. That little bit of wasted time. I wonder if that will be the mistake. The problem is fumbling that toss has meant they've had to go this way and obviously it's harder for them to get through as they are here ready to intercept as Guitar Ration trying to get as many gauntlet kills as possible. So weak though, passing it on to ETJ. ETJ is going to intercept it, goes for the Berserk, isn't quite getting the frags and Legend is going to be able to clean this one up with a lightning gun. But already three members of ZR here trying to stop them from getting in and one of them falls down. Mag is the first one to go down, two members here. Legend by drop. No, he's met off immediately by ETJ. I mean that one Berserk kill, it was enough to leave Legend by himself. Poker link with the drop. Plenty of work left to do, but it has to be done. CR, they've only got 4% left, but and this the, tournament is over. The protection goes to Mag. This uh -oh. is a big problem oh, now no. for uh, TKG. They had to, no choice but to invest everything into the soul, but doing so has given up the protection for free to he's scale got a bull rush. He's got a ball rush. The second he gets that free space, he's going to use it. He tries and he pops it. No one is stopping this Galactic Warlord from just running headfirst with all of that damage mitigation. I mean, I mean three of them, invincible. Three of them are running here as fast as they can to stop him, but he dropped it off. They only 2% more. They cannot lose this fight, but they are fighting into protection. They have so it won't do enough. They are trading out two for two as Mag is still alive. And now, nine oh no! they drop off again. And Legend manages to take him out, but they were able to drop it off. Have they managed to intercept? They have. Cyrax has it again. I just don't know he's getting away. Yeah, he's not getting away from that. He is way too weak. ETJ coming in with a soul. He's got plenty of health, plenty of armor. He just needs to survive it with three people all over. And Guitaration with the gauntlet going back and forth. Tuto, hang on. Uh -oh. He survives. Is that it? That might be one person here. Are they close enough? They have it. They managed to steal it away, but will they get away alive? Legend tries to throw it down, but there we go. There's someone ready to stop him. Mag is going to stop him dead in his tracks, but still, they're managing to trade out frag for frag. This is an absolute bloodbath. I think on that's the it. They have it. I think that's going to be game over, and he can't reach it in time. Team ZR are going to be your South American representatives for sacrifice at Quake. Oh, Dreamhack Winter. That's the term. That's the term. Can't even keep up with myself in that situation. That is in insane how well they played at the end. I mean, they played their hearts out to give TKG their dues. They put everything they had into that final point. But I mean, that was the hardest for me. For, 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 for Pokelink there, right? Pokelink, 93 frags. Pokelink got 93 frags in that final map alone. That's just a testament to how long it took, how long the rounds went down, how we went to so close. No, almost 100 frags on scale bearer. I want to bet at least half of those are probably bull rush as well. So 50 times he led the way. So, I mean, Team ZR, what can we say that has Bravo. not just... I mean, well played. Thoroughly well played. They had the bracket reset against them, which a lot of teams around the world, for any game that has a double elimination format, right, that does a lot to your team stature. You know, you've got a lot of work to do. The, the, the set has been redone. You've got to do it all over again. A team that has just defeated you, you know, can they do it again? There's a lot playing on your mind, but they kept it together, clutched it out on Tempest Shrine and on Lockbox. I mean, that was one of the most ridiculous endings to any sacrifice series I think I've ever witnessed, and I'm glad we all got to see it. And that was the play that sends them to DreamHack Winter. I mean, like, I mean, can we, uh, can we say adaptation? Considering TKG won 2-0 in the reset, or, the, or for the reset, as obviously uh, ZR were going in from the winner's side. So TKG won 2-0, reset the bracket, and then ZR with that return 2-0. Very, very well played overall, but that's it from us for the week now. But don't worry, Quake Champions will return next week with ZSX and Zoot on the commentary desk. So Excited forward for that. to seeing those guys again. I know it's been a while, uh, at least on the Quake Champions Twitch, so very happy to see the guys coming back. But... That's it for South America. Next week, we'll be seeing uh, Australia as a region, so very excited for that. Have you got anything to say before we call it a night? I'm just happy that we uh, got to see it. Also, it's CIS as well, so it's going to be another week of double regions. So that's going to be nice to see sort of two regions at once. CIS is going to be a bloodbath, by the way. I can't imagine how I mean, close that's going to be. It, 
every series is probably going to be ridiculous because I, al I already envy those that match make on the CIS servers because you're going to bump into basically everyone and you're going to get destroyed. But in Australia, a region we don't get to see every day, much like South America, and these guys delivered completely on both Duel and Sacrifice. And there will be a, a healthy addition to DreamHack Winter. But I mean, CIS being a bit of a shark tank from the get go, I think that's going to be fantastic. And also, you know, from a personal note, ZSX and Zoo, I can't wait to see these guys again because they've been massive inspirations for us at the very least uh, going into Quake Champions. It's good to see them back in an official setting. So thank you very much for watching, guys. That's it from us this week. Thank you all for watching. You've been